are minimalists. <laughs> when you don't want to cling anymore, the journey to change can come with a feeling of emptiness. Mm. How do you deal with that emptiness? So, Lisa, emptiness. We're dealing with emptiness here. And I suspect when you walked away from comedy after 30 years, and now it was like, okay, I stopped clinging to that. The, the question then becomes, what do I cling to next? hundred percent. Like, okay, cling to the idea of taking this life coaching course for mm. three years and be a great, hugely paid life coach, <laughs> having a huge, enormous podcast, getting to lead workshops like food related workshops in Kripalu or in all these yoga and meditation places, Canyon Ranch. That'll make me happy. So I started clinging to those pursuits. Mm. And then again, as I said before, I was like, none of this is working. None of mm. it fills the hole. None of it makes me feel at all peaceful. It's just another rat race in substitution for the comedy. And now it's like, okay, let's do nothing. Mm. And again, I think it's just emptiness is good because then it gives you space to fill it with the right things. Mm. And I wasn't filling it with the right things like connection and stuff, real connection. Right. Yeah. And you know, by the way, Dr. Drew, I had said this on his podcast, this is so wild. I said, I don't think I was ever a comic. I think I was just someone who was trying to connect with something and that was the way I did it. Ooh. And he goes, I suspect a lot of comedians are like that. Yeah. So yeah, it, mm. it don't work. Don't be afraid of the emptiness. I may actually be afraid of it because it is hard, mm. but it won't last forever. I think we always are just thinking, Ooh. if I start crying, I'll never stop. I'll die from crying. If I have an emptiness, an empty day, it'll never, I'll never have another day with something to do. Yeah. And the saddest thing is not going to the emptiness first. Yeah, it makes me... Uh makes me think about how it's almost a superpower to be able to sit with emptiness and hold space for it. Cause that's, I mean, yeah, sometimes there's a void that, uh, that only, you know, you can fill with acceptance of the void, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Right. So the, the void that we often create or other people create it for us, whether it's marketers or demographers or your peer group, they make you feel inadequate, but it's really you that make you feel inadequate. So that emptiness, the problem with the emptiness is we presuppose that it needs to be filled, right? Mm -hmm. You buy a giant house, you had four homes, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not just four empty homes, these are four homes. Now I have to fill them with things. You have a spare bedroom. I have to get everything that is supposed to be in there. And so we make up all these shoulds. You know, I should buy this. I shouldn't buy that. I should do this. I shouldn't do that. I should eat this. I shouldn't eat that. And all of a sudden, we're filling our life with everyone else's shoulds, every, everyone else's your supposed tos. Mm. And no wonder we're so miserable. We have identified this emptiness it's we're not happy and so how am i going to be happy i'm only going to be happy if i fill the emptiness mm. well no, no no the reason i'm unhappy the reason i'm discontented is i think that i should fill the emptiness in the first place mm. nothing wrong with filling it but what's appropriate for me what is um where do i want to go what do i want to do with this some of the most beautiful spaces are really beautiful art museums that are functionally empty right now I don't walk into the Broad Museum downtown LA and say, oh my God, who's gonna, when are we going to fill this empty yeah. space? Yeah. Mm. No, it's just about appreciating the space for what it is. And maybe that emptiness is a, is a sign of calm, of serenity, wow. of peace. That's big. Yeah. You know what I'm very proud of, and you would be very proud of this in my house. My source of pride, one of them, is that I had saved uh, my mother's clothes the stuff i saved was just kind of all these funky old 90s sweaters that kids wear now mm -hmm. the, the, the youth of today mm -hmm. and i know i have a real hipster couple of nieces and nephews so i gave them all and they were thrilled they were like oh my god this is so badass okay i kept those two drawers empty <laughs> and every once in a while i look at them and i go i don't have to fill these drawers oh. so it's really cool because then i'm like well why do i have the dresser so I could get rid of the dresser someday, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody needs that. Maybe one of my, my relatives or Goodwill or um, mm -hmm. Habitat for Humanity. But it's so funny to go, oh, I don't have to fill those now. That's it's right. a weird new feeling wow. at 60 years old. Yeah. That's like a literal acceptance of the emptiness. Because yeah. maybe that dresser, because there are some beautiful dressers and armoires and credenz. I mean, there mm -hmm. are some beautiful furniture out there and maybe that makes the room. But yeah, it doesn't mean that we have to stuff it full of stuff just because we have it there in the room. I love that. It's the literal acceptance of 
emptiness. You're going to laugh, but I literally sometimes go in that back room. It's my mother's old bedroom and I'll pull the drawers open. I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know, but it's, it's learning what the emptiness can do. And we're just afraid of external emptiness and internal emptiness. Yeah. And it's just, it's okay. We can all be scared, but we can kind of muddle through. Mm. And so maybe it's not empty. Maybe it's merely clutter free. Mm. Ooh. Did you enjoy this video? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists today. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.